Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I want to talk about a topic that nowadays gets more and more attention by many developers, but it's something that I've been doing for many, many years now, and that is not using automapper or mappers in general, and instead doing manual mapping. It is of my opinion that you should not be using automapper or 99% of mapper libraries out there. There are a few exceptions, and I'm going to touch on them in this video. But this post caught my attention and it got a lot of attention on Reddit too, talking about the developer starting to hate Automapper more and more every day. And I tend to see more and more developers joining that narrative and I'm happy about it and I want to talk about it because I think, yeah, you should not be using a mapping library. And if you do use a mapping library, there should be very specific things you should be doing with mapping. So let's take a look at what we have here. So the post says, I'm starting to dislike Automapper more and more every day. Hey, I know Automapper is regarded as one of the most stable libraries in .NET ecosystem, and that is true. Uh, it is made by Jimmy Bogart, who has made Mediator 2, and he's also made a good library called the Responder. And the person says, I'm a huge fan of this library, but, but in each project, it seems to be more that there's an edge case that leads them to create complicated mappers and mapping profiles and then custom mapping, which leads to basically functionality being split in many areas because of the third party library. Some people advocate against Automapper, yours truly as well, because of things like this. And it's not just that you split your code, it's also what you do with your code. So what are your thoughts on this? And the first comment I think summarizes in a very nice way, which is anything that moves compile time errors into runtime errors should be discarded. Totally, totally agree. And we're gonna see less of this, by the way, as time goes by, because you can even see this sort of thing where things that should have been compiled errors are now runtime errors. For example, if you have an error in your dependency injection container registration, let's say you're trying to resolve a transient dependency through a singleton, you won't get an exception until you start the application. The app would never start, so it would be nice to have this in compile time. So if the project doesn't build, I can fix it earlier. And I don't have the potential of deploying it broken because I don't have tests or anything. So. I think that anything that can cause the application to fail on runtime being on compile time is good. And as you can see, this post is more liked than the original post about Automapper. And I totally agree with that. Yes, you can have a sort of a test validating the behavior of the mapper, and you can also validate it on the startup, but you can't really do it on compile time. This is not a problem you would have with manual mapping because if you have properly used your init keywords and your required keywords, you wouldn't really have this issue. Not only that, but they are in fact hard to debug as this comment is uh, talking about. Now, the next response is I'm more into manual mapping myself as well. If you take any of the courses I have on Dome Train, I don't use any mapping library of them at all. I do manual mapping. And in fact, we just launched 23 courses on design patterns there. So the first 200 of you can use discount code patterns20 at checkout to get a 20% discount on top of the already 20% discount because they're all in bundles. Uh, but besides the point, no third parties, nice and simple extension methods and no magic. That's exactly how I do it. I have an extension method on the things that need to be mapped. And I say map to response or map to domain or map to DTO. And that's all I need. And this is the point where many people say, yeah, but what if I need to inject a service into my mapper to do this? And, and that's where you lose the plot. You should, the mapper is not there to do any fancy logic. The mapper takes input A and gives you output A. That is it. The moment you inject things like URL generation services, I've seen password generation in a mapper, Jesus Christ, what the hell? So. You, you do none of that. The moment you have logic in your mappers, you lost the plot. The moment you inject services, they don't do it. You should never, ever, ever, ever do it. And another point I see a lot has to do with mocking, because it's like, oh, I'm injecting an iMapper, I'm gonna mock the iMapper in my unit test, for example. Never, never mock the mapper. There is not a single use case that you should ever mock the mapper, ever. If you have unit tests, inject the mapper or use the mapper and use the real implementation. It's part of the unit. By removing it, you remove a true aspect of your application and you're basically making your tests useless and unreliable. And I know that because in 2015, when this post on Stack Overflow asked unit testing with Automapper, Jimmy replied, Jimmy Bogart, the creator, and said, don't mock Automapper. I never, ever do. Neither do I. Never mock Automapper. This is one of the first thing I fix when I consult on projects that are mocking Automapper. Not only you're complicating your test setup, but you're also making your test worse because you're removing a crucial component. Because now, what's the mapping? Is it the mocking or is it the real thing? Never mock the mapper. And if you're injecting things and logic into your mapper, remove them straight out of there. 
never do it. And again, completely agree. I gave up on AutoMapper years ago and I've not missed it at all. Manual mapping might take you an extra five minutes to implement for a class, but it's worth it on the long run. And it does. It's easier to debug, easier to see exactly what's going on, easier to not go too far with mapping because you're writing the code and you feel more guilty by basically doing things that you shouldn't be doing in the mapper. The mapper is just point A translated to point B. That is it. No logic, no nothing, just pop, pop. And if you want to concat different parameters or like compute based on the data you already have, yeah, do it. But don't bring external data in and use them in the mapper. Bring them into the thing and then the thing will use that data to be mapped to whatever it needs to be mapped. Another one is I'm very much of the opinion that if the mapping is trivial, then you're better off without auto mapper because it's simple to do without anyway. And if the mapping is not trivial, then you're better off without auto mapper because of the complexity. And the moment you need to customize one thing, it kind of all falls apart and you have to do custom crazy stuff anyway. You're gonna end up with a more unstable code base, more bugs, more confusion, how to debug is just do not do it, do not use a library. Now, I know what many of you are thinking, Nick, shouldn't I use something like Mapperly or some other compile time mapping library that allows me to just have the same mapping experience, but have the compile time like source generation experience, which means I'm going to get any compilation errors and I'm never going to build my project. And that's when I said 99% of the situations, because yes, I do think that using Mapperly is fine. I still don't use it myself. I like to have the control and seeing exactly what's going on. But I don't think you're doing something fundamentally wrong with Mapperly. The problem is the moment you need more customization, you tap into features of the library. And at that point, maybe you should just write your own mapping. And again, use Mapperly. Mapping is done at compile time and there's no reflection. Yes, Mapperly is great. It can be very, very efficient. Give it a start on GitHub. I think it's a great, great library. And I do recommend that if you are to use something, use Mapperly. There's no reflection. There is no nothing. It's just lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. But I do still stand in the camp that you should not be using any library, just use manual mapping. And then the rest of the comments are more chatter around, yeah, Copilot is my new auto mapper and so on. And, and that's very true with AI. You can actually make mapping so, so easy with one press of a tab button. You're getting the entire mapped thing made for you. So that's all the information in here. Now, Jimmy Bogart, in case you don't know, five years ago or four and a half years ago, made the auto mapper uses guidelines post where he's talking about everything like do initialize auto mapper do use this do, i'm gonna put a link in the description to that just to at least see where you stand with everything that you're doing currently and i know that not everyone can migrate but i do think you should in new projects not use auto mapper and mapping libraries own those mappings make them yourself make an extension method. And if you're wondering what I mean by make an extension method, the way I do my mapping is something like this. I have a static class. I say domain to DTO mapper. And then I have my uh, customer DTO, which is the response I want to get. And I have my domain object, which is the customer. And I say to customer DTO or map to customer DTO. And then all I need to do if I go to the usages is go to the service using it and just call that. I'm not injecting anything. I'm not doing any resolving in the mapper. I have no auto mapper at all. All I say is, Take this, map it to this, happy days. Same on the API endpoints, by the way. If I go over here in this integration test project and I go into my mapping, then you'll see I have the same from my API contract. So to customer from the request, I have the same in my domain, I have the same in the DTO, and I have the same on the DTO to domain. And yes, it took me like two minutes to write this, but it's very obvious what's going on. I have full control over it. I can see exactly what's going on. And it's very easy on the code as well. It's it's a very obvious in terms of what I'm doing. I think the biggest issue we have as C-sharp developers is we're trying to be too clever with tooling. And it's sort of the same thing that happened to microservices. You go from manual mapping to like auto mapper, and then you pull back and you say, I don't actually need any of this. Why am I complicating it for myself? It's the same thing with architecture as well. You know, is it clean architecture? Is it vertical slices? Is it this? Is it that? Sometimes we push too far because we think we're too clever, but it actually pays dividends to be simpler because it's easier for everyone both to understand your code base and for you, if you take a look at it two years down the road, you're going to be more comfortable with what you have in place. At least that's what I think. But I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And are you using a mapper? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.